Welcome, empowered investors, and thank you for joining me today. Let's start off with this. So the market, some would say, is totally frozen, and I wouldn't disagree. But at the same time, you know, as we've seen activity decline and fewer transactions with higher interest rates and low housing affordability, and all this talk of a Fed pivot, which might take longer than expected, we shall see. We've still got an appreciating market, and we've got, amazingly, a hot enough market to demand this kind of very unique mortgage product. So if you're looking at the screen, you see that Cross Country Mortgage has unveiled a cash offer loan product. Yes, the market is so hot that there is demand for a cash offer loan product. In other words, a mortgage product or a loan product that enables a regular individual buyer, a non-institutional buyer, to compete with an all-cash offer from either an institutional buyer or someone who's just trading equity, who's got a few bucks, and who's making a cash offer, not financing the property. Buyers have found it very hard to compete with these people or these institutions. And so they have got a mortgage product or a loan product to help with this. As demand for homes continues to outpace new listings, the article says, Cross Country Mortgage or CCM is introducing a new cash offer product. The Cleveland-based mortgage lender unveiled Cash Plus to help buyers gain an edge in the bidding process by turning pre-approvals into cash offers. Cash Plus has no appraisal or financing contingencies. The product is limited to conventional loans on primary residences and buyers who are represented by a real estate agent. Hmm, that's kind of interesting. So in other words, if the buyer does not have an agent, they can't make this cash offer. They can't use this cash offer product. That's kind of interesting. I think that's maybe kind of a fraud prevention measure. They figure if an agent is involved, there's going to be a little bit lower likelihood because there's another person sort of involved in the transaction, not wanting to like risk their career, risk their license by using this cash offer product in some sort of fraudulent way. That's my take on it. There's a sort of a little additional oversight there, right? Not that all realtors are honest by any means, but uh, hey, it's another, it's another check in the balance, right? Quote, in a housing environment where homes are receiving multiple bids, CCM cash plus program helps our borrowers compete with all cash offers, unquote. Chief Operating Officer Gene Stareski said in a statement, many buyers, especially first-time buyers, struggle to compete with all cash offers across all price tiers. Now, this is interesting. Redfin data shows that the share of homes purchased with all cash reached a 9 your high point of 34.1% this past September. So can you imagine we are in a market where more than one third of all homes are sold all cash, no financing. That's really pretty amazing. And the article goes on to say other national lenders, including Guild Mortgage and New American Funding, have all cash offer programs too. So this is pretty incredible. Now, what's also interesting, remember I always say, always ask yourself, what is the article not telling you? Well, it says that these all cash offers reached a nine-year high point of the 34.1%. But why would that be a nine-year high point? Well, if we go back nine years ago, we were in an era where financing had pretty much dried up coming out of the Great Recession. Fannie Mae had this limit that you could only have four financed properties, whereas now you can have 10 financed properties. There's still a limit, right? But that required people to pay all cash much more often back then because the financing simply wasn't available. And then you also have to realize that nine years ago, houses were much less expensive. So 
multiple reasons, right, for for that dynamic of why it reached a nine-year high. So I would argue that the nine-year high is really distorted because of this fact, right? Because the financing just simply wasn't available back then. Okay, so that's interesting that there is demand for a mortgage product like this because the market is so hot and it's so hard to compete with all these all cash offers out there that companies have to address this part of the market. Really, really pretty interesting there as we kind of think that we're in this market that's frozen, right? That's not very hot. That's not much activity. But again, it's not about the overall sales volume, which is lower. It's about the comparison of buyer demand versus existing inventory, right? That supply and demand equation. So interesting article there. Okay. Now, here is another thing I want to show you. There are a million ways to lie with statistics or to have various data in any market, not just real estate, any market, mislead people. And this is one of those times. So you see these various surveys out there that say new home prices are down. And they're not really down, but I just want you to see one more thing that is kind of going into this mix. And it is this. Builders are addressing the housing affordability problem, as we've talked about on prior episodes. They're addressing the housing affordability problem by simply building smaller, cheaper houses. Now, if you compare this to the houses they were selling a few years back that were larger, more expensive, had better finishes, et cetera, et cetera. You could parse that and you could see that, you know, new home prices are coming down, right? There are various surveys that show this kind of thing or or builders are more flexible or offering more incentives. But that's simply not really true because the builders are simply selling a cheaper product. I mean, think about it, folks. It's easier to look at this in terms of like automobiles, right? In the 1970s, when we had the OPEC oil embargo and we had gas lines and American car companies reacted very slowly because American cars were big and they were gas hogs and all of this, right? And then you saw the foreign competitors, the Japanese, come in and offer these really small, cheap cars that were very fuel efficient. And I remember we had one, okay? One of the cars that my mom bought when I was a kid, because we had like no money at all, okay? I remember it was a new car, but it was a Honda Civic. And back then, the Honda Civic was this tiny little thing. I wish I had a picture of it. It was this blue, tiny little car. I mean, it was a total death trap. It's kind of like the cars you see in Europe, right? That are tiny little super small cars. And to save money, this car literally had zero options, right? It was a stick shift. It had no air conditioning. It had no radio right? It certainly didn't have push button windows and automatic door locks and all that kind of stuff, right? It was a tiny little cracker box car. And so you could say, well, car prices are coming down because there's a whole bunch of cheaper cars that have entered the market, right? But that would not be true. And that's exactly what's happening with the new home market, where you see builders addressing the housing affordability problem by simply offering a cheaper product. And so that distorts the statistics. So you just have to understand that. So here, this article says single family home size falls to more than a decade low. According to second quarter data, the census quarterly starts and completions by purpose and design. Boy, that's a mouthful. And NAHB, National Association of Home Builders, analysis median single family square footage floor area declined to 2,191 square feet, the lowest reading since the end of 2010. Home size increased in 2021 as the COVID-19 pandemic resulted. (laughs) That's intentional. 
I know how to read the word, but I intentionally said that. <laughs> Hope the algorithm doesn't catch it. Resulted in the need for more residential space as more people stayed home and used the residential property as offices, gyms, and classrooms to teach their kids at home, right? During this period, when mortgage rates reached historic lows, buyers had more purchasing power, which spurred the demand for larger homes. And we talked about this trend and I predicted this trend and I was right again on that during the COVID era. However, as interest rates increased in 2022 and housing affordability worsened, the demand for home size trended lower. NAHB economist who we've had on the show, Robert Dietz, provides more analysis in the Ion Housing blog post. So understand this is a statistical distortion and it will continue. If housing affordability stays really low, you're gonna see builders continue to address this problem with smaller, cheaper homes with fewer features and cheaper finishes, and that will lower the entry price for these new homes. Now, if you want to see how home builders are doing and what they think, or really more importantly, what their stakeholders think, just look at home builder stock and look at their stock prices. And it tells you a lot. Not that I'm a fan of Wall Street. I think Wall Street is the modern version of organized crime. You know that. I recommend that people be direct investors so they have control over their investments. Commandment number three, thou shalt maintain control, okay? But looking at their stock, at the stock of home builders, it really gives you a good proxy and some good inside information on what the home builders think, but also, of course, what their shareholders think. 